First, let's talk about some basics. When you look at a desktop, these are the things that you need to have showing. You need to have your tool palette over to the left. And on the right, I have my layers palette. You always want your layers palette showing so you can see layers. And you should have your history showing as well. There's lots of other panels that are handy here, but really the history is the most important. The other thing is Making selections. Whenever you're modifying an image, you're going to make selections a lot. And here's a few rules about selections. So in the marquee tool, there's a feather option. So I'm going to make sure my feather is on zero most of the time. And the style should be normal. So if I click and drag a square, that gives me a marquee. Now if I want to change it, if I just draw again, it's going to throw away the first one. So if you've made a mistake on the first marquee that you draw, just start again and make a new one. Now if you're still drawing and you haven't let go of your mouse, you can hold the space bar and it will move the whole thing. So that's kind of a nice little trick. Or let's say you want to subtract from this. You like this, it's just a little too long. There's two keys that will let you add or subtract. If I hold the shift key, see my little marquee, it changes to a little plus. If I hold the shift key and I draw another square, see how it adds to it? If I hold the alt key or option on a Mac and I drag a square, it subtracts from it. So shift will add and alt will subtract. And what I'd like to do is crop it to an 8 by 10. So I'm going to use the crop tool and I'm going to put in here width of 8 and height of 10 but no resolution. I don't want to res it up or down, I just want to define the 8 by 10 shape. So when I get my crosshair, I'm going to make my 8 by 10. Well, it's really cropping off a lot. I wanted to show her little top and her belly there, so I need to make my image bigger. That's about where I would like my 8 by 10 crop. When I hit enter, it will expand the edges, and so now I've got an 8 by 10. The problem is, now I have these white edges. So here's where the extension works. We're going to use the marquee with no feather. Make sure there's no feather on the option bar. I'm going to start at this outside edge and draw a marquee over to her shoulder. Now we don't want any body parts in this because I'm going to stretch it. As long as it's just this background, and, you, and you're only going to stretch it up to half its width. You don't want to do more than that because it's obvious. But I'm just going to go to Edit, Transform. Now normally you would hold Shift so it doesn't distort. Well in this case we really want to distort. So we're just going to stretch the side over and stretch it out. Control D to deselect. Look at that. You would never know. I'm going to go to the other side. Sometimes you get a tricky image like this one and you got to be really careful about transforming. So let me do this one more time. 10 inches by 8 inches. Let's fix the perspective on this image. There's lots of different ways to do it, but this one is really easy. What I'm going to do is actually use the crop tool. So in the crop tool, you can set your width and your height and your resolution. But in a case like this, I definitely don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit this clear button. So there's no width, no height, and no resolution. Now I can actually correct the perspective. And it's actually helpful if you're in CS5 to use the grid because you can see when everything's lined up. This time we're going to straighten a file. And sometimes when you take an image, you don't realize you're shooting it sideways. So what I'm going to do is show you how easy it is to straighten. For this segment, we're going to talk about the clone, the patch tool, and the healing brush, and when you should use which one. The next thing we're going to talk about is making black and whites and also making tints. It's actually really easy. So here we have an image that just has a simple plain gray background. She was photographed downtown, kind of an urban area. But I took these flowers and I drug the image on top. There, that's my favorite overlay. Isn't that gorgeous? So then I'm going to go to my brushes 
and then I'm going to choose a brush. Now I happen to have lots of different decorative brushes because I'm a brush fanatic and I've made all of these. And now if you stamp it off the edge, there's only half of the brush, but it and just soft feminine kind of things. Then I have some graphic edges. These are a little more edgy and I want to put this horizontal picture into this horizontal placeholder. Therefore, I need to click on that layer. Layer number two is the one. So if that one is selected, then when I go over here and choose this image, I can drag it into my document, layer, create clipping mask. Here's the shortcut, alt Control g So if I do that, look what happens. It clips it to the placeholder. Now it's only visible where the placeholder is. Okay, so let's make one more template. This time we are going to put a couple images on it. We're going to use what we've learned already on this video and we're going to make a template that looks like this. But what I normally do is click on the mask, go to my big masking brush, which is basically a 900 pixel, 900 pixel soft brush with black at 100%. And then I can just feather that off and feather that off and so now we don't have any transition. If you turn this off, see what I did? I just can feather off the edges. This is what my mask looks like. So there we go. That's all it takes. Then the last thing I did is I clicked up there and I put family. So have fun with Photoshop. Explore and try all kinds of stuff. There's lots more to learn. You can always visit my blog online and pick up all kinds of tips, and that's youtube.com slash Suzette Allen.